So then in terms of solutions, because that's, that's something that I really always like to hit on is, is what are the, the potential solutions. I do feel like a lot of even the, the, the people I really like on, on the left, there is a real tendency to, to focus on the problems and call out the, the problems and, and list them and call them out and get mad about them. And, and all that is, is crucial. All that is, needs to be done. But we also need to be thinking about what's what's a step two, what what are the potential solutions? Because if we don't have any to offer, then I, I don't see how this movement is is really going to to have legs to really spread and, and succeed. You gotta be giving people something to hang on to, to, to look at. I mean I hate to use that word, but to, the word but to, to hope for. I mean if you're gonna have a movement, I mean you have to have something for people to hope for in there. What I find works is to to really focus on the money, in that when you're when you're focusing on 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 the money and looking at how the money works and where and where it goes, it, I think that can guide you towards solutions. So it's like what what's our issue with the money right now? Well, you have billionaires and mega corps with tons of money, and they're using that money to buy our corrupt Congress, and to get the laws passed, and and so things operate in their interest and not in the interest of the 99 percent and so if you're focusing on on that that money then that's where you really want to try to cut that cord between the economic elites and the congress the representatives that are supposed to be representing us and so i've tried to to hit some of that in my list of proposed demands or that i've been working on and i'll just show the one in here the uh, number eight that's about addressing the influence of big money in politics and government and really viewing this as you know the core issue because it's it's how they they own the congress it, it drives everything else and so if you're talking about at, at the state and local level um, it's things like clean elections and public financing of campaigns it's possible to do these things i mean massachusetts had a clean elections law in the past it really comes down to demanding these things, to getting in the streets over these things, I'm serious about them. Definitely, yeah, definitely. It also seems like it's it's probably going to be a little bit easier uh, to to begin with at the state level. And then at the federal level, you basically you basically got to amend the constitution because right now money is speech, corporations are people. Right. You're gonna as long as we have a Supreme Court that interprets the laws and the constitution that way, it's going to be difficult to to pass really serious campaign finance reform and, and public financing and things like that with, with teeth because they'll they'll twist it. They'll they'll twist it in all kinds of ways into being like they'll they'll take other uh, parts of the constitution, the Bill of Rights and saying, you know, you're you're depriving them of their due process because you're not letting them spend you know, spend all their money. And it's ridiculous, but it but it works because enough people are, are corrupted in, in the system. If you look at the proposed amendment that the move to amend folks have out there, the weed of the people amendment and it's and it's real simple. Like you mentioned earlier, it's yep. real simple. Artificial entities, such as corporations, do not have constitutional rights. Money is not free speech. That's your basic amendment. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it gets into a little more detail, but you know, that's your amendment. I, I think if we made something like this, the cornerstone of a left movement, it, it could be a, a dividing line, a, a thing of where you're really pressing candidates and representatives to say, you know, are you really for this or, or aren't you? Yeah. And this is very possible. It's not something that we want to get cynical about. This is this is possible to happen and, and worth fighting for. There are things that, you know, we, we can be doing is, you know, there are potential solutions. I see it as, you know, we need to be making demands and we need to really get difficult about those demands. I think on the left, we need to have ideas out there that we kind of, that we're thinking about maybe, you know, out of the box things, even like, like we could take, we could pass a federal law to, and just say the maximum lending rate is 5%, period. Yep, just absolutely. everything. That, that's the cap. You know, we, Congress can do that. <laughs> And that, you know, that, that could be passed, you know, and you got to ask why is that happening? I mean, who, who's against that? <laughs> is, is the 99% against that? 
<laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. yeah I agree. But I, I, I feel like we're almost like not trying <laughs> for, for some of these things. We're not really pushing and, and trying to make use of our of our numbers. You could have um, things like, like I was saying earlier, you know, you could eliminate taxes, you know, below like a certain income level, you know, and that could even be like 100, 200 grand and just have those taxes be progressive taxes on, on the higher incomes get rid of you know get rid of all the taxes get rid of the sales taxes i mean and just simplify it and just have a high income tax have a wealth tax if you really did that you know the the effect would be transformative as far as the the wealth inequality situation and you, you do the same thing with with businesses i mean i don't hear you know, this i mean sometimes you hear it talked about with small businesses and how they're having trouble you know how they would have trouble paying minimum wages and things like that well you know, you could have progressive um, business and corporate taxes where if you're a small business in, let's say, less than 100 employees, your your corporate tax is zero. You could do that and shift the tax burden to the big boys where oh, it belongs. Yeah. yeah, one of the I think one of the biggest, um, you know, magic acts that the Republican Party has managed to pull off is convincing small business owners that they're for them. Mm. And yeah, well, if you're for them, then cut their taxes to zero <laughs> yeah small business owners should be very interested in progressive politics because they're not they're not the businesses being um taken care of right now that's for sure and i mean you can even go the other way almost to like reverse taxation and you know shifting federal dollars to small businesses absolutely just in a real way yeah so we've been talking about money you know what money is there's even the whole concept of electronic money like like when i was showing when i was showing the the, the coins and things the other the other thing i could be showing you know this is money too now yep, apple pay samsung pay all that yeah <laughs> the, the phone i mean it, it's electronic and, and that so you think of, of paypal now and how how paypal's been turned into an inst- instrument of censorship now and it, it's you know money's money is power it's yes it's a real thing and money is power money is speech <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is right now. I mean, I, I guess it always will be in, in to some extent, but it's just it's just gone way too far. And the ninety nine percent that I keep referencing, you know, we we need to find our power and, and leverage our numbers. Yeah, definitely. I think we should also be suspicious and and keep an eye on on w- of what parts of the government are, are being actively funded. Um, you know, mm. one of the problems is that you'll and budgets see, are power. In yeah, there. budgets, like the police first responder budgets compared to other areas, you know, be, be suspicious and, and wherever you live, look at what, what money is going to the budgets. In some some jurisdictions, uh, the police, which is almost like it can be sort of a, a tie-in to the military industrial complex, can be having a lot of budget, money budgets going to the police when not going into schools and social programs. You have like a, an agency like the New York City Police Department it's I think would be in the top 25 of, of militaries in the world just based off of its budget and, and amount of staff it's something we just, should be very suspicious think about of. that you know it's it's like a foreign military yes <laughs> it's just just there <laughs> just right operating and and they operate outside of the city too absolutely oh yeah the the NYPD actually I know for a fact they have offices outside of of New York outside of the country I, I know at least that they have one substation i think in israel that for for just a municipal police department to to be doing international operations i'm not i'm not claiming that there's a lot but it does exist it's uh it just makes you wonder because it's not really what a local municipal police department should really be be doing but if you think about the capital police i know that some people pointed out the yeah, he just got a big boost yeah i know people pointed out hypocrisies that some of the members of like the squad and whatnot supported that um it's 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 very transparent when they do that because it, it goes and it shows who they're really interested in which is their own interests you know we already established that that police you know it has its the, the police department they as it exists today has its roots in in slave catching and in uh, protection of private property and enforcement of property laws and so that's what the capitol police is not a lot of people know this the capitol police they also do personal protection for members of congress so like nancy pelosi she has a capitol police detail similar to secret so service important. yes similar to like a secret service type thing i'm not i don't think every single member of congress has their own personal detail but the the ones that you see in in the news all the time definitely do i think senators all do 
Um, I'm and struck he, by the arrogance of these people. Yeah, but, but that's another topic. <laughs> and and also all the all the money that they just flooded into the Capitol Police because they they were saying that it's going to be detecting and preventing future acts like the January 6th stuff. They they've almost turned it from a federal law enforcement agency into like a federal like intelligence community type agency. So that's just something we should definitely continue to be suspicious of and and question any kind of major increases into the police departments, especially considering that we're not really seeing a, a benefit to the general public. We should be demanding cuts. Yeah. It's like we should be demanding cuts to the military budget. Right. Start cutting it, period. Absolutely. And yeah, also with with that, any cuts, just be very suspicious of, of how rises in crime that they're alleging might be twisted in terms of that. So that